is how would you design an ATM for the blind? And this is sort of like a typical question that you would get asked at a company like Google, for example, right? They, they'd like to see how you can brainstorm about designing a product like this, which, you know, it really requires you to put yourself in the shoes of the person that has this disability. Um, and so let's, let's think about, you know, a framework to answer this. And then like usual, I always like to have somebody actually try to answer the question and then everybody can jump in and provide feedback as well as, you know, answering the question together. So, you know, one example of a framework that I use for this is, and you, you, you probably are familiar with the circles framework. So I use it and, 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 and I vary it a little bit. Um, but for this one, I start with, okay, so the question is, how to design um, an ATM for the blind. So that's sort of like a challenge here. And usually I start with, you know, clarifying questions because this is a very, um, open question, right? So you might want to narrow down uh, to what's, you know, what they mean precisely, what specific case. And then second would be, okay, so now that you have clarified your questions, now in order to design a product for these users, you need to understand the user, right? And by that is, uh, maybe, you know, you, you like to understand what you know what they care about right what what is their main pain points actually here is mostly what they care about their objective goal at the very high level what is the goal right relative to this atn machine right and then from there go to use cases and why is this important this goal because that is really going to drive at the end how you're going to prioritize your solutions and use cases, which is going to be to meet not only the pain points, but make sure that they align with the final user's objectives. Um, and then, you know, you go through use cases and that's going to basically uh, allow you to see what are the pain points that you need to solve for. And, you know, sometimes, most of the time, you need to prioritize pain points or use cases. then you can come to the place where you start talking about solutions and make sure that you tell what kinds of use cases you are addressing with these solutions. And finally, um, on the solutions also, uh, you know, you, you also prioritize solutions. You can even speak about trade-offs. And then finally, you just like wrap up. Right. So let's start with clarifying questions. And, you know, just would like somebody to take it, take it away and volunteer to answer these questions. And we, we all of us can jump in and just help each other. Uh, so, um, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, I'm hearing an echo. Oh, you are? Who is speaking right now? Ruturaj. Hey, Ruturaj. Uh, uh, can you, are you using your headphones? Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. OK, cool. Yeah, I was using my headphones before. So uh, when it comes to clarifying questions, right? Say, mm -hmm. for example, if this uh, question is for Google, uh, should we really start like what uh problem is like what goal is google trying to achieve here should we start yeah. there or should we really ask directly the questions around the users yeah that's a good point in my, my take for this type of question what really they're trying to see is to see how you think in terms of designing the product and how um you know, user empathy, how much user empathy you have. Okay. Right? Um, and, you know, 
keep in mind that this is just uh, this is a, a very you know like um, a design question, right? Yeah. It's not, they're not asking you about an existing Google product. Okay. So from that point of view, if it's an existing Google product, right? They may ask you uh, what feature will you design next? Okay. Okay. That's different. Then you start. Then you need to start thinking. Okay. Uh, first of all, what's the product about? You know. A, what where in the market it is, who are the competitors, and then who are the users? Yep, yep, yep. What to do next, right? For yep. this one, they're trying to see whether you can design something that meets users' pain points. Okay. And how you go about that, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So here a question like what's the objective of the business is not appropriate. Okay. Because this is the uh, uh, how can I say it? Um, what's the right word? Yeah, this is an invented question, right? Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. okay. you say like you know for blind people you mean children, blind children, blind adults, blind people in the U.S. that speak English? Mm -hmm. That type of or is that type of the clarifying questions we would ask? Well, for the clarifying questions, what I would think about is, uh, I mean, it's a good good question, right? I mean, you you're saying okay, is this for so I will ask questions related to the usage of the ATM, right? So whether you speak English or not, yes, that's important, right? Uh, so that, that would be a good question, right? From multilingual, right? Mm -hmm. So is it English, multilingual, right? Is it for, and then you mentioned Arsene Young or older, right? Right, but that's more of the users, right? That's more of like a persona, right? So it's not really a. No, but that is, that is relevant because for example, if I'm going to design an ATM for somebody that is 70 years old, they usually have less, uh, you know, they're less coordinated. Right. They, may, they may need a help in standing. You know, they may have a different height. Right? So that is important, right? What ages, maybe, right? Although, if you know what, you know, I would answer this question well, what do you think ATMs are designed for today, right? Mm. It's, it's for everybody that needs money. Yeah. And that can be any adult. So I would say yes for everybody that is like, I would say, you know, 16 plus or more, right? 14. Um, Okay. Does it need to be bilingual? Yes. If it's, you know, if it's here for the United States, you have population that speak different languages. What else? Yeah, I would also volunteer some objectives for this project, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly clarify as the interviewer, but I would volunteer and say, you know, something that would I would later use to measure the success of the project, which is, number one, um, attract new customers who are blind, mm -hmm. uh, increase retention among the customers who are blind. Um, and then uh, number three, reduce the usage of uh, like a live uh, banking associates by the blind population, which then driving up the margins of the bank, right? Because if currently they cannot use the existing ATM infrastructure, they'll go in to do simple transactions with the banking associate, which would drive the you know, cost per customer up for the bank. And, and I would say that number three is just corporate responsibility, where it's important for us to, you know, service the needs of, of people with special needs. So, so are, maybe I would. What are you, what are you, what, what are these points about Arsen? I'm just talking about like the overall objectives, sort of when I would like open the case, I would say, here's why I think, um, you know, a, a customer, be it a bank or maybe Google is doing this project for a bank is that why would this project even be started? Why should we even do this project? That's when I would cover the objectives. Yeah, I, what's in, yeah. You know, and this goes back to what Ritu Rush was asking, right? And would I, is it relevant for, for what the interviewer, the interviewer is trying to get from you, right? Um, I personally think it's not relevant because this is more a question about uh, design design and, and looking at your creativity, right? Uh, if I were telling you, hey, we are Wells Fargo, all right? And 
uh, we want to you know have an ATM that actually serves the segment of our customers which are blind then it makes sense you know then you start thinking okay Wells Fargo all right so you know why would Wells Fargo spend money on this what's in for Wells Fargo that's not that's not what I think where this question is going I see I see makes sense thank you yeah? so this question is going towards hey tell me how would you put yourself in the life of a blind person when they go to the when they go and need money and can you can arson think of this blind person and design something for them that will help them with that yeah primarily i think the they are trying to evaluate if you can put yourself in the customer shoes yeah and if you uh, evaluate how you would operate the atm yeah as a customer yeah so these questions are relevant because this is about the customer, you know? Um, so, so that's what I would ask. The other thing that I would ask is, look, um, is, is this machine only useful for the blind or do you want it, you want it to be useful also to non-blind people? So both. That's a good point. Right? Yeah. Um, so to make it, to make it a, a little bit more, uh, in the short amount of time that we have, my answer would be just for the blind. Okay. Um, just for the blind. Okay. So let's um, let's not think about the users. Okay. So we talked about um, you know let's let's think about the users themselves and any blind person that wants to get money and uh, you know two two segments that i see is like you know young or adults that have more physical strength and then i thought older folks 60 plus that are less coordinated. You know, probably have more fears. Fears of, um, you know, having some accident, right? These guys will also have fears, but are more stable. Right? They cannot see. Imagine if you're on the street, you have cars, noise. Uh, it, it, I would imagine it's very fearful, right? And for an older person, it's even more so. So that's that's what I thought. What are your thoughts? Well, could you also segment by kind of how blind they are? Um, I mean, it could be just very, very, you know, uh, yeah, it's not right. totally blind. Right, uh, it could be just just bad vision, blind, yeah, or, or completely blind. I I don't know if that's a good way to segment. Yeah, uh, good way. Partially blind, or or hundred percent, right? I think that's a good way to segment too. Yeah, because if you're partially blind, you can at least see color. You can at least see like big letters that you can still read, right? Versus if you're partially like you don't have an eye or something you're like. Right, I agree with that. Um, so that's another way to segment. Um, and when, you know, this might affect, this might affect the design of the ATM in terms of the different cases that it may have to, you know, serve for the different type of users. Now, at the high level, I think what is really important is to think about what, what is the main, uh, what do these, the blind really want to accomplish what is super important to them and i think what is super important to them which is you know we need to put in here is at that at the high level they want to be independent right? they don't want to depend on anybody to help them i would imagine just like us right uh, independent and i think they would like to feel safe that to me is probably like the main objective for them to have a service that can service them. Can that service 
give me independence? Can that service make me feel safe? Any other thoughts? So, uh, do you think uh, discussing pain points of the users would be more um, would be a better approach here? This is not pain points, right? This is what is it? Um, it's not pain points, but what is it that they desire? Okay. What is it that they desire at the very high level? You know, what's the main goal, right? Mm -hmm. Of people, for example, um, let's see, uh, let's see a product. The the reason I'm saying this is like uh, you mentioned, right? Uh, that they are primarily trying to evaluate uh, if you have customer empathy or not, and empathy comes when you are try uh, really trying to understand what are the pain points for the blind people today. Yeah, and we're gonna go through that, of course, in yeah. a lot of detail. Okay. Um, but remember, you know, you have business. Usually, you have business objectives and you have user objectives, right? Okay. And and the and the user objective describes at the end what they want to get done, what they want to achieve, right? Yep. That's different than that. That gives you sort of like the overall umbrella of the pain points, right? Okay. The pain points are just details. Yep. But uh, the overall umbrella, it's important. Why is it important? Because when you start looking at your solutions, you you need to pick solutions that are going to maximize the final goal. Okay, got it. Okay. Yep. yep. So, okay, so now let's go through use cases. Okay. Now, here I usually think that uh, for this particular case, guiding your thought process with a customer journey is very useful. And then if we go through the customer journey, is going to tell us, um, you know, more detailed. You know, the use cases are going to surface, right? So one customer journey I thought of, and then we can go through details. Is like, okay, the first thing, if I am a blind person, first I need to locate the ATM. I don't know where it is. After I locate the ATM, then I need to get to the ATM. After I get to the ATM, how do I request a task? And after I request a task, how do I confirm that that task was done right? What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I haven't even thought about the part of the journey where they locate an ATM. So that's brilliant. <laughs> I assume they are standing ATM and then what happens next? Yeah, that, that really forces you to think about every movement, every step, right? And provide sort of like an end-to-end -end yes. experience. Um, so, so this helps me sort of like guide just the step-by-step -step thing. And now we can go into a more deep brainstorming, okay? Now we can, we can think of Okay, I need to, um, you know, let me pick, look, you know, locate the ATM, for example. Let's start with locate the ATM, and we put it in the bubble here. Locate ATM, and and so I, this helps me at least think about. Okay, I am the blind person. I need to find out where the ATM is because I know I go. I need to get money. What? what how can we help? you know, the blind person get to that ATM, know where it is, and actually get there. So, so, the, so the use cases would be, I'm, I don't want to get into solutions, so I'm going to use cases. So locate the ATM, what, what I would be thinking would be, okay, um, where is it? Where is the ATM? How, how to get there? That would be the next question that I have as a blind person. How do I get there? Then, um, you know, once there, once there, 
how to how to reach you know how to reach the ATM. Where exactly is it? So that would be sort of like my thought process. Then if I go to request task to the ATM, it will, I would be like, how do I know how to, you know, um, how to interact, when to interact, right? When, when and how, when, that's how to interact. With ATM, no clue. You know, um, you know. Then um, how do I enter information? Entering or providing data, right? Um, how do I retrieve cash? You know, the machine gives me cash, how do I retrieve it? Then, um, how do I know it's the right amount? How do I know it's not a mistake? Another thing would be it's like, hey, I want to be alone. I want privacy. Am I safe? Because I don't want somebody to be watching me. Or like, you know, okay, so I'm done. I don't want to be rushed. I want, you know, time to, to save my money, you know, like to, to put money away. So all these thoughts I think I would be having and more. Would love to get from you guys any other thoughts. Sorry, uh, just to clarify, are these kind of pain points that you're outlining here or are these use cases? These are, these are use cases, right? So we can label them. This would be use case one, two, three, I see. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got it. And okay. And what are we supposed to select a user to go into, or do we just list out the two types of users and just say? Right. And that's a very good point. And I, I, I would have, um, I should have mentioned that about it about that. But um, so what I thought was, hey, we have different users, you selected um, partial and complete blindness. I, I selected actually young and 65. So I haven't thought about this, this type, but based on what I thought, uh, I would say, hey, you know, they share common, they share common pain points, you know, because both of them are blind. And so there's the issue of how to, you know, get to the ATM, how to do the transactions and how to feel safe. But the difference is that when I design something, a solution, uh, I would be more concerned about the older people having the uh, help, additional help in help them, for example, press buttons or have more coordination or be able to sit. But I think since both of them share the same type of uh, use cases, I would start with the basic, you know, basic use cases. And then when I design the product, I will take into consideration the age okay. of the solar segment. Okay, thanks. Now, for the partially blind and completely blind, if, if you have gone this way, um, I would say, you know, um, you cannot discriminate between the two levels of blindness, right? Right. Uh, but uh, there could be some things that you can provide the partially blind that you know will would probably be something that will be helpful for them that is not helpful for the, for the completely blind and and speed up things right so we'll take that into consideration okay. like for example they, they are able to see color so maybe we can like 
show red, blue, and green, you know, as symbolizing perhaps uh, when a task is done or not done. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a pretty good list of use cases, I think. What's the... Yeah, and I could go on. I mean, I had even more. Uh, is there a maximum number that we're supposed to kind of go to besides just like, because you could, yeah, like you said, we could go on and have like 15 use cases, but is yeah. that really helpful at that point? Yeah, not really helpful, right? I think that um, once you show this, you show that you are really empathic, right? You're showing that you have a process and a methodology uh, of going through and that you're not missing any steps. So going more is probably not helpful, but you can say, you know what, I think that um, now you have to sort of prioritize use cases, right? What are the main, the, the most important use cases? And, you know, my thoughts were, well, I think that, you know, I, I personally think that providing an end-to-end -end experience, right, from locating the ATM to actually confirming the task and getting them back home safely is important, right? But if I had to choose, uh, if I were forced to choose, then it has to be something related to the to the ATM machine itself, right? So there are alternatives to find where the ATM is and how to get there. For example, they can call the bank and say, "Hey, where's the ATM machine for for me?" And they can call Uber and then get picked up and dropped at the ATM machine. So if I were forced to choose, then I would choose the use cases that are uh, that are particular to these situations when they are already in. In the, in the ATM and, and requesting the task. So all the use cases related to the task itself. Related to what? Yeah, related to the transaction. So okay. when they're already in front of the ATM. Okay. And, you know, and then, you know, the, the ATM has to actually um, interact with the user, right? So those, those use cases would be, for example, um, how do I how do I know how to interact with the ATM, right? How do I enter data? How do I retrieve my money? How do I know I got the the, the right amount? And also, how do I know I am alone and somebody's not about to steal my money, right? So those would be the use cases that I would focus on, and I think that all of them are really important to the independent to feel the to make the person feel independent, that they don't need somebody to, you know, to ask them to get money, and also to feel safe. Do you want to guys want to go through solutions, or do you, we can brainstorm from the beginning? This just was just one thought. No, it sounds good to me. Yeah, let's jump to solutions. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, just one clarifying question for the use cases. Yeah, are, sure. are, what about like use cases in terms of I want to take money out versus I just want to check my balance? Are those not the use cases? It seems like the way that you define use cases is that you're running through the, the, the user journey and essentially each piece of the journey becomes a use case versus yeah. I want to take my money out versus I want to put more money in versus like I want to check my balance, right? Those are kind of not really uh, like a different type of use case. Yeah. So the one that you're mentioning, so I put entering data, but here is also getting data, right? Getting information. And it could be anything, right? You just want to get the balance. I hope our people. Okay. Right. So, so what you're doing basically includes all those types of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And okay. You're right, it should be an umbrella, right? OK, that, that makes sense. OK, thank you. We can, um, we can go to solutions. And so if we think about solutions, right, then I would start, first I would start by saying, look, the obvious thing, which is we need an, uh, an intelligent assistant, right? A voice intelligent assistant, like, like Alexa or whatever, right, that can, commu that can communicate with the user. Right, so I would start by saying that that has to be sort of the interface with with the blind person. Right, in the absence of that, I'm gonna think of uh, options along the way. 
but I just wanted to put it out there. Well, that's sort of like the obvious interface. Second, I was thinking, okay, let's start with the first use case here, which is how do I find where the ATM is, right? So one idea is to have an app, a mobile app from the bank, you know, uh, that uses the voice as the intelligent assistance, right, and tells ATM location, and and then option to call an Uber. Or maybe voice directions, right? <clears throat> if let's say it's nearby. Yeah. So tells ATM location, and you're right. And tells, and this is what I have here, tells walking, walking distance, time, or, you know, uh, driving. Hey, Malina. Uh, I thought like we were just prioritizing the ones that you have circled in orange color. Yes. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Good point. Yeah. I was trying to solve all everything. Let's start from, from this one. You're really hardcore, Malena. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, man. I'm glad you, that you guys are paying attention. <laughs> So let's start with fourth, right? Okay, so they're they in the, they're there, right? So I'm, I was thinking for this one, it's like, okay, so I'm dropping in front of the ATM. Now, one big thing is safety. So one solution that I thought, and you guys can, you know, one solution, you guys please tell me more solutions. But one solution is to have two rooms, okay? One for waiting and one for ATM. ATM room. And the reason I wanted two rooms is because that gives them privacy. Right? So people can wait and people then have are alone inside the ATM room so they feel safe. Right? So that was one idea, right? And the room will have an intelligent assistant, you know, talking to them. I so think so like, like in oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Like an enclosed sort of ATM kiosk right per per each atm machine right something I would, like that yeah that would be that would be nice right like if you have you have a version for the blind next to it yeah yeah because if you're talking if the machine is talking to you out loud then pretty much everybody around can yeah you don't want that right security has, right yeah it has to be some proof yeah i think uh one of the solution that i was thinking was uh one uh, once that particular person comes near to that ATM machine, uh, uh, he, that blind person would probably have an app, and uh, the ATM machine would automatically detect uh, because of the location of the user. Yep. Uh, this particular person has now arrived near that machine. That's very good. So that's something that um, how to interact with the ATM. So, so there's another solution for for use case four which is an app that uh, communicates. Uh, basically, basically, um, basically app, the ATM machine detects uh, through yeah. Ge geotagging, right? Uh, right but right. you know, beyond geotagging, right? Because an app, the moment you have an extra item in your like in your flow chain, in your in your chain, it actually increases friction. So maybe then also have like a image recognition so the ATM will visually recognize a blind person because they usually have the walking stick and things like that or maybe by the pattern they're walking and maybe the moment they kind of get somewhat closer to an ATM within reasonable distance start telling them the ATM is on the left side let's say you know five feet away from you sort of guide them further on maybe maybe use that beyond the geotagging yeah I think uh, the geotagging I was uh, uh, I was recommending that because uh, one thing is how we can make them uh, make the ATM experience more secure enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And, and I was thinking, you know, in, in, in that sense, um, who, who thought about this idea? Sorry. It was me, Ruturaj. Ruturaj. I was thinking, in, you know, to, to, to complement your idea, you know, the, the ATM detects the app of the user and actually it can track, track user from home or, or from source destination, from origin. Yeah. So that when they arrive, they can salute them. Yep. 
to work on them and they feel safe yeah because like uh, they can probably take their name okay hi malina now that you are here type your code right exactly so the voice that uh voice that kind of speaks out something which is uh, not uh, which is basically is not invading the privacy of that particular user and and the image recognition could be for the people that don't have the app you know yep they're just coming in here and and maybe the atm welcomes them and say hey you know please have a seat or you know the waiting room is on the right or whatever yeah. hey malena i have one more uh, solution maybe a little bit different uh -huh. can you guys hear me yeah i was thinking you know what does an atm do it basically is a way to transfer value mm -hmm. i think for blind people in general there is always a risk like uh, even if you know it's a secure room if somebody is just tracking them they could kind of like uh, you know have a security risk after they get out of the atm right i mean there there are multiple places that there is risk like somebody could get into the room with them somebody could fool them so what i was thinking is what if uh, th there is a transfer of value i get it but if, what if there is a transfer of value through just you know like a mobile to mobile so that it's secure you know some other form of value that is getting transferred but still it is similar to cash in the sense that you know cash is fungible it's easy uh, so that's what i was thinking like i mean is there really a need for this atm to dispense cash because yeah. and i mean and and i think i think himanshu the the um how can i say the uh, the intention of the question yeah. is to force you yeah. this way right okay then, got it got it i know you don't you know you can have a mobile and you know use it you you, you know use yeah. your wallet you know probably blind people yeah. are really yeah. doing that right but i think they're asking you the question because they want to see how you can put your, yourself in the shoe of the blind person right got it got it no i i think that makes sense yes mm -hmm. okay i got it okay cool so that's so those are uh, good ideas um so once you know once um okay so you 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 will have the voice assistant and uh, you know the voice assistant will ask you well what you what would you like to do right um so you will have here also um this is how do i enter data and so how do i interact with the atm again here is atm will ask for i would say for your name and then you will do a face recognition with its database to make sure that it's you right so that's uh that's how i think you will you know first recognize you and then once it approves you it says okay what would you like to do what would you like right uh so that was again that's case use case number four and now how does the uh person know how to enter data well again it's all this takes care of that also number five and six this is four five and six because it's all voice interface right do you want to augment it with like a bra braille keypad ah uh, yeah great right, idea yeah. so i was thinking about that so you can augment it and, and that's a great idea we can augment it with uh, a braille keypad and also i was thinking of let's say that uh, the intelligent assistant breaks okay so what do we do well you can also have you can invent sort of like a pad that has um a uh, 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 material where i think the braille letters can just dynamically appear right because the the computer will the atm can control it and that would be the response to the person so the person can type and then then the atm can 
change the form, you know, the shape of the material into braille letters so the person can read with their hands. Yep, that's a moonshot idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> but with... So, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it even now is like possible, let's say with like multiple, so if you substitute pixels for pins, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, if, if you think like dot matrix printer, right, what it's doing is just like shooting these little pins, um, like, against the ribbon, and that's how it's printing. So in this case, the pins really can shoot out and move a certain distance and therefore create letters on a yeah. surface consisting of those multiple sort of, like, needles. Well, not sharp needles. Exactly. Um, but obviously having a – that's more like a mechanical solution. But then going further, like you mentioned, yeah, maybe there's an invention or something that could – just have a better solution for the pad, for the braille pad. Yeah. But that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like the letters can appear dynamically as you change them with the material like pins, you know, like, like when you have sand and you raise the sand to, to form shapes and stuff like that. So that would be one idea. Um, so then how to retrieve cash, right? So that's the, that's the sand uh, when you put here. You just have like, a, a, a headphone there so that instead of having to feel anything or read anything, they just put the headphones on and then it's all auditory. Yeah, I was thinking that what if that breaks? What if the headphone breaks? No, what if the auditory breaks, if the oh. breaks, then you can have this version next to it. I see, I see. Uh, but the headphones is a good idea if you want privacy, right? You don't want anybody to hear anything at all. Right, okay. Um, so that, that would be also, you know, that counts. Uh, and then you would have, um, you know, retrieving the cash, right? So um, that could be a, a plate with sound, right? You can have like sound, uh, I don't know what you call it, like, 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 like sounds coming from, Cash trail, cash, cash plate, you know, so that the person can go and pick it up. How about confirming that they got the money right? What do you think about that? How, how would you do that? That's really hard. You mean confirming? I mean, they could tell you how much it is. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you want to confirm it. Oh, um, you mean for the person to confirm it? Yes. Uh, well, maybe like a visual recognition, right? If you hold that money and then it's sort of, I don't know. Okay. Well, well I mean, cash today does have Braille on it, right? It does? Yeah, yeah. Every piece of uh, paper note. Oh, awesome. Okay. It, oh, I didn't know that. I think like every currency has that too. It's not just in US dollars. Like... At least all the money in China has had it for decades. Like you can, a blind person can just feel the cat, feel the cat. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, if you look at, yeah, look at, pretty, pretty much like every currency has braille on it. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So that goes away. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So, and another thing that I was putting here is like the ATM can call an Uber to get the person back home. So we have these solutions, right? And you know, as we, as we were talking, we were like meeting these solutions, matching them to use cases, right? So I think we covered them, right? How to interact with the NTM, entering data. This is this is a the intelligent assistant that talks to the person, getting information, retrieve the cash. And do I have the right amount? That was not a problem, as Kenny said. Um, and then privacy, we, we did that with a special room, right? Um, so then the, the question is, OK, so do we need to prioritize solutions here, right? And which one would you prioritize? And let me list them. So we have, let me list, we have two, we have three, Four, we have this five, the braille, the headphones. Well, this is, this is a, I, I, I'm not going to put that because it's a no brainer. 
um, sounds coming from the cash plate, an ATM called Spooler. So if we have this and we say, okay, how am I going to prioritize? Well, what would be your answer? What would you, what solutions would you do would be a must for you based on what? I mean, I would look at the, um, you know, implementation complexity factor, value to the customer, mm -hmm. right? And the delighter, like the innovation factor, um, and then maybe maybe prioritize it based on that. And also available resources. So if we have maybe like two or whatever, three developers, whatever, X developers available, then for the MVP, what do we go? Oh, actually, you know what? I was thinking MVP. No, you can't really do an MVP because that's not a software product. So you actually have to like bang out a real finished physical product, which has a long development cycle. So then I would also take that into consideration that we can't really iterate a lot. Uh, maybe a little bit like beta, intern like al alpha internally, but when going outside, we can't really iterate a lot. So it's got to be a good, good solution that will have most of the final features in it, right? So keeping all of that in mind. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think that it's probably good to just put that in a nutshell, like pick three criteria, right? Because if you're in the interview, you cannot pick too many criteria. You have to pick the most important ones. Yeah, probably um, one of them would be implementation. How easy is it to build uh, for each feature? How, how, what, how what? Like implementation. So how easy is it to build? Right? Yeah. We're talking about a kind of an image recognition system, uh, versus like basically building a room around the ATM, like probably one's a little bit easier than the other. So um, complexity would be one. Okay. Yeah. And then, sorry, and just to clear up, I misspoke before. The U.S. note actually does not have Braille on it. I just looked it up. <laughs> but <laughs> the international notes have have Braille. So just just to clear up. Okay. So this this looks cool. So then, uh, yeah, we, we need to check, check how much money they have. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that at the end. Um, so I think complexity is definitely one, but I think that here is when, remember when I talk about the user's objective, right? What gives the user, what do they want it to get done, the users? Well, they want it to be independent, get to the ATM, do what they needed to do, and come back home safe, right? So which of these solutions will actually have higher impact to that, right? So I would put here impact to users' goal. Because at the end, the user is, the, is what matters, right? And so they're going to select your product based on whether it solves their problems and what they worry about. Right, so I think that I put it in just two things, complexity and impact to the user's goals. Right, and and then I will go one by one and quickly just you know pick the ones that are top ones. Um, I think having separate rooms is important. Like I would pick that one as having high impact to the users. Right, so maybe maybe we do a table here. I will put here the solutions one. And we put here impact and complexity, right? So the, so the solution is here, actually, solution number two. I think the two rules really gives privacy, which is what they want, feel safe. You know, um, all of these solutions, you know, help them be independent, actually, right? And complexity is very low. So I would say, you know, uh, impact is high, complexity is low. Um, in terms of the ATM detects the, the, the user through the app when they come in and welcomes them with their name. I think that actually speaks a lot to their feeling of safety. What do you think? Yeah, and it's really easy to implement. And it's really easy to implement, right? So high, low. Okay, so then we have for the image recognition. That to me is simple to do today, at least to see the cane, right? 
and, and a person. So I think that's also sort of like high impact and low complexity. Um, how about the, yeah, the face recognition that is also doable, although, you know, I mean, I've been doing that also with machine learning with the course that I took. So I know it's doable uh, and, and it's being used, but it's probably more complex than these other ones. And that, that definitely is high impact because, you know, you need to recognize that person in order to give them access to, to the cash. Um, but maybe complexity is a little bit more, medium. Um, but it is a must. I actually, I would put this a high plus, right? Because without recognizing them, you, 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 you know, you don't want to give them access to the account, right? Uh, how about six, the Braille keypad? I would say that that's, uh, that's, that's, you know, medium impact because they, they have the voice assistant, right? So that's an additional thing. But, um, the complexity is very easy. Seventh, uh, the cash plate with the sound, that is high impact, I would say, because I need to pick up the plate and low complexity. So if like looking at these sevens, you know, you have like this, this one's here. Uh, actually, the most important one is this one which is the, the uh, face recognition, which has the highest impact. And then I will pick the other ones, right? And I think that, I think that these three and the last one, they, they just have to be there. Or do you think not? So, um, I, and, and you know, Malena, I wanted to kind of hear your uh, kind of thought on this. Is this for this type of case, like if, if I were interviewing a person, right? For me, what in the end of the day, since we walked through um, the whole case and had you showed empathy and everything, in the end of the day, I want to see if that product manager can be practical, right, and implement it. So, in terms of practicality, I would say most likely we won't be able to do if if we if we actually do it in reality, nobody would want to build uh, a separate ATM um, for blind. So mm -hmm. it probably will have to combine it the reels of a uh, a uh, non-blind person and a blind the needs and then probably constraints in terms of budget in terms of like real estate space and things like that mm -hmm. so i would then say in in reality while the ideal solution would be to have separate rooms in reality um i would find that a hard sell to big banks because then you know it's a lot of expenses um, so yeah. in this case i would then say what can we do to make the existing atms kind of serve both audiences and maybe like do some trade-offs is that important or yeah, do you yeah. think that we yeah, yeah. I, so. I totally i totally agree with you right and actually that brings up new new ideas and new things for example you know i mean kevin mentioned the the headphones right so instead of making an extra room hey have the headphones available that are maybe wireless right so that uh so that the blind person can actually listen in privacy. Yep. Um, so I, I agree with you, Arsene, totally on that. Okay, thank you. So that's something that I would say, you know, having done this, you know, I, I realized that, you know, we can, if we had unlimited resources, it would be wonderful for a blind person. But given that resources are limited, maybe we can actually, um, you know, make, make an ATM extended so that it serves both clients and do some trade-offs. You know, some things we're not going to have, but at least they can complete certain tasks. Yeah, yeah. And maybe like, you know, like we were talking about an interface, like the voice interface on the ATM machine, right? And then maybe then if we can actually do a coupling between the machine itself and then the app on the phone, so then if the customer has maybe already had phones attached to their smartphones, they can put it on. And the moment they're near the ATM, the interaction will happen through the app because they'll kind of sync up, right? So maybe that will help with the kind of security and privacy, but at the same time, more personalized, um, I don't know, um, uh, yeah, service. I, for the... 
and you can have the app with their headphones on because I think that the person needs to, you know, they, they need to give the, their approval for everything, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, having that feedback with the app, I think it's a good idea, right? And that would save a lot of costs, right? Very good, yeah. All right, what do you guys think? <laughs> I think yeah, it was great. And, and uh, I mean, I think like when I was thinking about the case, Malena, I think he went at least by an order, if not two orders of magnitude in a lot more details than what I could come up with. So that was really amazing to see that kind of empathy and that level of detail of you went to areas I haven't even like imagined that we should go to. So that gives like a really good example of what we should be really doing in this, right? So that's, that's like really amazing creativity. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. It helps a lot to guide you through the customer journey and also do uh, the brainstorming. You know, if you exercise, uh, you know, with, with, when you do your problems, I think that helps you a lot. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, were you saying something? Oh, no, I was just saying that was a great process. You know, it's, it's good to see somebody who's really good at this, you know, run through the process and brainstorm and kind of, um, yeah, so I, I actually learned a lot from, from this and uh, definitely. Thank and, and thank you guys for also, you know, giving the feedback. Like, it, it's great, like, you know, making it realistic and practical is really important, right? Uh, that's something you always need to uh, Malena, one question is that, uh, you know, and w when we kind of practice offline, right, or, or offline or do like kind of peer-to-peer -peer practice, um, many times we're not constrained with time. And then when you go to an interview, bang, you're asked a question and you really don't have a lot of time to brainstorm. You want to be effective. You want to be thoughtful. You want to be kind of empathic. So, um, like, what do you do? Like, do you practice like with the clock on or do you try to sort of like spend more time and then see what do you do with like, when you practice like with your partner, when you practice with your partner, do it like in twenty minutes max. Okay. Okay. Usually, what I do, whenever I put this framework, boom, 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 I write it down. I say, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. You know, I'm going to talk about first about the the users, their goals and objectives, the use cases, blah blah blah. Go really quickly about it, right? And then where I spend time, and I think it's truly important to spend time in, is in the users. Okay, so when you talk about the users, you need to talk about them in terms of who they are as people, what they care about, their emotions, okay, and their goal with respect to your product. Those are key. And, and, and if you do that, uh, you know, you do that, maybe you have three types of personas, right? But spend time on it. That's the most important part, right? And, and, and so you guide yourself with the list. And you say, okay, and now I'm going to talk about the personas. And this is what I'm thinking about these people. And now you pick the primary persona. Okay, you say, okay, I think this is the most important persona because they have uh, these objectives. And, 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 you know, they're the ones that need more of product. And then you go, now I'm going to talk about pain points and um, based on use cases. That's going to help me. Now, when I do use cases, I, I'm telling you, I don't know how it works for you, but for me, a, I cannot think by bullet point. I have to brainstorm horizontally. So I don't care what they say on the interview. I can just not be a machine and go boom, boom, boom. I will, and I think what they're looking for is actually to see how you're gonna guide your team, okay, in, uh, in, in product sessions. And so that's how I would present it and say, look, now I'm gonna start brainstorming about ideas, uh, use cases of these people. And in use cases, remember what I did? I just, I just write them really quickly, right? With some words. And you just talk about them and say, bam, 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 bam. And, and then you go quickly and say, okay, I'm going to prioritize. You, you, and the thing is that you have to, this is the most important part. This is where I want to spend all my time. The rest, which is picking use cases and solutions, I think that solutions are guided by your use cases, right? And so that's where I think in the interview, they don't, they don't, you know, they want to see how you think, how do you get there? But it's okay if you go fast on that. I think that the part where you need to spend more time is on this. 
uh, and then how you prioritize your uses and that's so that, that that's the hardest part too when you're under the gun when you're on the clock and you're giving a problem to really come up with use cases to really be thoughtful and think of all the pain points and all the parts of the journey a customer can have so that probably just comes with just more practice it comes with practice but i but i think it comes with seeing it i'm very visual so and i think people are general visual and if you start uh, connecting just putting words boom, 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 then all the use cases will come up, right? Okay, that's, that, that's a helpful suggestion. That's your way of brainstorming, and that's how I would do it, you know? So even if they, if they don't understand what I'm saying at the beginning of what I'm doing, I put the words and then I explain to them, okay, this is a use case, this is not a use case, this is not a use case, right? Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Milana. Thank, Thank you, everybody. So much, really great session. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. I know.